Check this shit out. All right, let's dive into another surprise game that was only released in Europe, Disney's Aladdin. The American audience got a grip of Disney-related titles, including The Little Mermaid, Tailspin, DuckTales, and many more, most of which were made by Capcom. However, the European market got three unique titles, including The Lion King, which I reviewed a few months back, Beauty and the Beast, which I'll get to soon, and today's bizarrity, Aladdin. Not to be confused with the unlicensed Aladdin Deck Enhancer, which is its own story for sure, Aladdin was officially licensed by the Walt Disney Company and is based on the classic Sega Genesis version that was made by Virgin Interactive. Does it work on my North American top loader? Mm, no, no it does not. Oh well, let's emulate. So if you've played the excellent Sega Genesis Aladdin, then you will instantly recognize that this is a very simple pared down version of the 16-bit classic. But damn, there's pared down, and then there's pared down. And this game is, wow. If you've seen my Lion King video, I mentioned how it and several other late NES titles were actually Game Boy games that were strangely, inexplicably transferred over, and you can really tell. This wouldn't look amazing on the handheld Game Boy, but it'd be at least somewhat decent. However, on the NES, this is the bottom of the barrel graphics-wise. Everything you saw on the Genesis original is imitated in the NES conversion, including these cutscenes, the layout of the levels, and even the placement of certain enemies and items. They did a decent job replicating the sprite animations of the 16-bit version, albeit in much simpler terms, but you can still see glimpses of greatness like Aladdin's idol animation or how the guard grabs his foot while walking on the hot coals. But man, they really butchered this one of Aladdin and Jasmine hugging. What is going on here? It looks like a penis is wearing an Aladdin Halloween costume. Every level is represented here except for the genie stage and a couple of boss fights. I was mostly surprised that they even attempted to replicate the magic carpet escape, as it's one of the fastest and most impressive looking stages of its time, and, well, they gave it a shot at least. The music is, yeah. It's only a couple songs from the movie on repeat, and even then, they're only 30 second bleep bloop style loops. Obviously everything is way sparser and dumbed down in every way possible here, but given its bizarre production origin, that's to be expected. Like the Lion King before it, Aladdin is pretty much just a, they did the best they could, conversion of a Game Boy title, which is a remake of a Sega Genesis game that was then ported to the NES. Naturally. With all that in mind, how does it play? Honestly, way better than you think it would, and a thousand times better than its brutal Lion King cousin. Since there's only two buttons, you have to press select to switch between the apple and the sword. The sword is not only a little delayed, but doesn't really work in the air at all, so you'll mostly be using the projectile apple. The jumping is hilariously floaty, allowing Aladdin to leap higher and further than these level designs ever thought possible. The combat isn't awful, but the hit detection is skewed so you will not hit and be hit at times so that you didn't think possible. Also, the sword does not deflect daggers, which means that the hardest enemies in the game now are these fat guys, as avoiding their projectiles is close to impossible in certain spots. Mostly the game is just really slow and awkward. Everything takes longer than it should, and it's often unclear on what you can and can't interact with. So much is unexpectedly blocking your path, or unfairly out of reach in a way that, yeah, a little polishing could have ironed out. For a Game Boy game, especially one that's porting a title from a graphically superior console, it's pretty admirable what they were able to recreate here. For an NES game, this is pretty atrocious, but ultimately kind of playable in a, well, it's Friday, and Dad said I could only rent one game all weekend kind of way. Not recommending it in any shape or form, it's terrible, but contextually it's not as bad as it could be. So checking the score sheet, that's two for two on shitty Disney Genesis turned Game Boy turned NES games only released in Europe, the most specialized of specialized subgenres. Thankfully the final Euro Disney title, Beauty and the Beast, is its own unique game, but we'll have to come back to that another time. Hey y'all, if you like my channel, I'm posting additional exclusive videos over at patreon.com slash words. I've been enjoying creating content with a wider focus beyond just the NES, so if you want to see more of that and also give me some support, I've linked to my Patreon page in the comments. I'm also streaming a random game every Thursday, 9pm Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube, so come and hang out. 
Until next time, thanks for watching.